right, we're back with more Chibi reviews. ReZero review for episode six, the red and the blue Oni. Give it to me, Chibi. You know what I just realized? What? Sundays are really good days. Not just for anime fans, but live action fans as well. Because live you, action look, fans? Boku no Hero Academia, early morning. So you yeah. have something to wake up to early in the morning to watch something very good. Boku no Hero Academia. Would you guys wake up early to watch My Hero Academia? Maybe back then, maybe eight years ago when it was different. That was like season one, season two content, right? When it was like fucking lit. <laughs> in the middle of the day, ReZero, which I'm currently going to be discussing about. Yeah. ReZero, in the middle of the day, a very good nice, series. Nice, nice. Game of Thrones late at night, along with Fear of the Walking Dead. Whoa, Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. Dude, Sundays are packed eight years ago. Holy shit. You got peak My Hero Academia in the early seasons into ReZero afternoon. Game of Thrones is airing, and I'm sure it's not the bad seasons either back then. And Walking Dead was also fucking popping off early too, right? Two other really great series. Sundays are really good days. I have to say, when it comes to this month, Sundays have been one of the days I've looked forward to the most every single week. So anyways, getting off of that, let's talk about ReZero. Alright. Episode 6. So... One of the most shocking things about this episode is that Subaru did not die. Yet. yet. <laughs> it looked like he was going to, right? Yeah, he, he did not die in this episode. Now, I'm not going to say he's probably not going to die at the beginning of next week's episode, but... Five minutes in, I think we die, right? Four to five minutes in, Rem just fucking slashes our throats. He didn't die in this episode, which is a huge improvement compared to what has happened in recent episodes of ReZero. For sure. Because, I mean, usually in every single episode of ReZero, he always dies right at the end of the episode and in the episode cliffhangers. It's kind of been like a repeating pattern. But with this week's episode, it doesn't do that. Subaru actually survives. He's alive. And now he figured out who is actually killing him. He actually saw the person that's been killing him every single week. He realized... I guess we can just assume that, like, again... The reason why I'm so hesitant to believing that Rem was the killer in the second night, even though it's very likely because of the similar weapon type, is because, you know, they're twins. And I thought Rem might have the same thing. And in the second, in the second run, you know, we had that whole going to the village and talking about, you know, demonic possess and do like Onis and, you know, yeah, fuck the gods, bro. At least the demons will fucking laugh with you or some shit. And, and Rem was smiling. And based off of that smile, I thought that, oh shit, you know, it can't be her. But now after watching episode 7 and beyond and... Rem directly saying, we were all just fucking acting. They're all just, just acting and just, it was all fake. Now I can believe that Rem did that on second night as well. Because the smile, everything, it was just an act. Because Subaru was just all so sus. And every run he gets more sus. Because the witch's stent gets stronger with each run. Which is even crazier to think about, because like with each, every, every failed run, it gets even more suspicious. I don't know who can exactly smell it. I'm not sure if regular humans can smell it, but definitely the mansions people can smell it, and it's becoming more and more weird. Like, imagine that. The faction that is anti-Amelia, the witch's cult, the, the faction that people think that Subaru might be from, and he's even releasing the witch's smell, whatever that means, it's, we're so fucked. ...realized who's doing it, and he comes to find out it's actually one of the twins, the sisters, and... I guess I have my suspicion about it, but the main thing was I expected to be something else. It was kind of predictable, so I expected it to be something else, but I guess at the end of the day, I should have expected as much it being one of the sisters. But the main thing I want to talk about is the kind of presentation of this episode and what it was trying to set up and hint okay. at. So last week, we were already getting hints that the sisters might be some form of demons. That, that was... Onis, but yeah. It's already hinted at in last week's episode with the entire conversation. Well, with this episode, once again, we have more setup going on with demons or ogres in general. Yep. We get a folktale or a story being told by Subaru. He's telling the story from his homeland in Japan. He's talking about a red ogre and a blue ogre. And this is actually not the first time I've ever heard this story. Very common folklore. To do a little bit of a fun fact for all of you, I actually heard about this story in Ore Monogatari. It was a romance series last year. Some of you may have watched it, some of you may not have watched it. It was a very good romance series that stood out last year when it came to anime. And if you have yet to ever watch Ore Monogatari, and if you love romance and slice life, Ore Monogatari. Is that Monogatari series, or does it simply just have Monogatari in? That's why it's making me think that it's those series. Go watch it. It's by Studio Madhouse as well. There was okay. actually a segment in Ore Monogatari that focused on this story, th this tell, this fairy tale about the Red Ogre and Blue Ogre. 
And amongst the story, you notice that one of the sisters, Rim, she got very interested in the story. To where, at the point of where you're guessing, most likely, she's probably an ogre. She's definitely yep. either an ogre or yep. she's a demon. But regardless, though, with last week's episode already hinting that she was some form of demon, to this week's episode showing her interest in ogres and stuff, and the way she got kind of connected with it, it kind of lets us know that she is definitely not human, but also most likely something similar to an ogre or a demon. So, seeing her kind of be the main focus or maybe the killer in this, you know, part of the story, I guess it makes a little bit of sense. I, it yeah, and tie that in with the fact that the witch's cult was the reason for Rem and Ram's, like, tragedy in the past, right? I think they said, like, our families are... Did, they, did she specifically say our village was burned down? But I think there was specific dialogue of, like, the witch's cult who was responsible for my family or my situation right now, right? So it's kind of crazy to see, like... Yeah, everything just makes more and more sense of how, why Rem and Rem, with each run, get even more suspicious. It does. But the main question is, for what purpose? And what is really going on here? And why is Subaru being killed? That's the main thing we need to look at right now. Because Subaru, as we knew, he was getting along with the sisters quite well in the previous flashback. And that's the thing! That's the craziest shit, the reveal episode 7, where it's just like, yeah, we are getting along. In our perspective. Everything that we see from Subaru outwards, that's just cap. You have no clue what everyone else is thinking about you. And when that shit hits, when it's just like, you never trusted me? And Rem goes, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, none of this shit ever mattered. Or, you know, the previous, like, say points he had. He was getting along with them. It seemed like everything was going nice and fine. And, I mean, he already left the mansion. It's not like he had any information to give. They probably were watching him, too. And judging by the reaction of the twin sisters of how they didn't want to communicate or talk with him at all, that's probably because he chose to be a house guest instead of someone that was actually yeah. working with him. Because, you know, they didn't want to communicate with him and give him any information that might be suspicious. True. And that's what I assumed was going on at the beginning of this episode. For instance, you know, how he changed his, you know, decision instead of being like a house guest from being like a worker there i wonder if there's also something with the witch's stench getting stronger with each run so this time even though he did become a freeloader and didn't become a butler and therefore there's no uh reason for rem and ram to interact they were acting way more colder in this one that's probably why they were very distant early on and why they were not friendly with him but then as they slowly started to open up with him towards the later parts of the time when he was about to leave then this happens at the end of the episode and it makes but that opening part, I don't, I don't think we really interact with the Rem that one, right? It was mostly with Ram, right? It was with Ram and talking about the story. This is still episode 6, yeah, 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 yeah. And it just, it was all an act, right? My sister's too kind. Both Rem and Ram were both just acting and everything that I thought, I, everything, that false sense of like security and like trust, it was all just, just to set us up for episode 7. Makes me question, okay, so... They were distant with him, they didn't really reveal anything, but then they come around and try to kill him, or at the very least one of the sisters tries to kill him. And then this raises many questions right now. Is this sister, Rim, is she doing this without the orders of the master of the house? I doubt it. I think Roswell's straight up disordering her, bro. Count or is she doing this on her own will? Like, is she doing this without being ordered to? That, that's the main thing. Is she working for someone else that we aren't aware of? Nah, I, I think that at the end of the day, Roswell is the, the fucking apex predator <laughs> in the Roswell L. Mathers mansion. And everyone has so much respect for the guy, except Betty to a degree. I'm sure she still does, but it's not clearly this complete submission like Rem and Ram. There's, there's no way Rem is acting independently right now. I think Roswell is definitely on top of that. Because we did hear about the Red Ogre and the Blue Ogre story in this episode yep. of ReZero. So maybe... Since she might be the Red Ogre, maybe there's more to the story that we need to look into. Maybe the Red Ogre is actually indeed bad and not necessarily good and actually deserves to be uh, people being scared of the Red Ogre, friend. Well, that's interesting. Kind of like taking the folklore story and having a different twist and how that may portray Rem right now. I mean, Rem is blue. I thought that it was pretty clear that Rem is the one that sacrificed everything and Ram got something. I mean, that's the part that I don't, still don't know yet, right? Clearly, that story somehow directly translated into Rem and Ram about how they lost everything. We know more that the witch's cult like took everything from them. And Rem, I don't know, right? They, they still exist. I thought if I, maybe if Rem no longer was around and living and Ram was the only one, then that would make sense. But they're still here. So it's like, what did Rem sacrifice? I don't know. I don't think we've seen their horns yet either. 
because Onis definitely do have horns, right? And it's supposed to fucking come out. But they're clearly hiding that with the bangs. And then there was a mention of like horns breaking or some shit. With Ram saying that like, oh, these fucking ogres are stupid. That story is stupid. She just broken the horns off and went in there. But so far, I, I don't really think that we're going on a different twist off that folklore. And since Ram is the right ogre. So that's what I think is going on here. But besides that, however, overall, the episode had some really good comedy moments throughout the episode. I mean, getting to see Puck and Subaru's interactions with each other, seeing how Puck was just being all cheery alongside of Subaru. It was just so cute. It was very adorable and cute. There were some funny moments when he got covered by shit. That's even funnier, right? Because his smell is getting worse with every run. <laughs> but they also covered him in shit intentionally in that run. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if they're like teasing us. Just like I, I I know there's nothing in common with the stench of shit and the stench of the witch, but like they did just do that in the next run, so I'm like, huh, I don't know. Cute. And also there was a line that was just straight up savage in this episode that I feel so bad for Hide your sorry thing? Or was that the previous episodes? I forgot. Subaru. And he took it quite well, but I feel so sorry for him because that really just fucking burnt his ass. So at the beginning of the episode, yeah, he's pretty much talking about Amelia Tan, you know, putting on the Tan at the end of her name. Oh, the nickname shit. And why would people give pet names? Well, it's because we're close. And Amelia goes, I don't think we're close, bro. And she's like, when did we ever become this close to use pet names? Like, she says that. Like, when have we ever been this close or ever gotten this close or had the time? And she's right, man. She's absolutely right. Because in her perspective, this is still right after the loot seller. And even in the loot seller... He just showed up out of nowhere and saved her. To her, he is still this weird being and for whatever reason still clings on to her and is trying to help her. And she must still think, this is kind of weird, but I guess it's, I don't know. I guess it's nice that he has so much passion to like help me out, but I don't know why you're doing this. That right there was a fucking burn because it's sad in a way because we know that Subaru has died multiple times to try to save her, help yeah. her out, and of course she doesn't remember that. She only remembers that certain point that you know his Nobody little remembers. segment of life he's managed to make it through, and she she doesn't remember the other points that he's constantly died to try to save her. So obviously she wouldn't be that close to him like he is to her. But it's still, it's a burn, but it's sad to see that these actions that Subaru does before he dies doesn't carry man. over. And they are unaware of it. And it really makes you really sad. I mean, the audience remembers, right? We remember, but in the show, nobody does. It's sad to see that the, all the things he's done for them, they kind of don't even know about it. It's kind of tragic in a way. But that's about it when it comes to this episode of ReZero. A very good episode. I enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think is... What do I think is going to happen? I think that <laughs> it's going to get really fucking sad next episode, bro. That episode 7, you, got, you guys got no idea what's coming. But here, here is Chibi's video. Please go give him a like and sub to the channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys on episode 7 review.